where sand becomes sea, a battleground appears. Fighting for our future. Making waves in the quest for equality. A vital chance for championship glory. And with each grain of time that passes, another chance for change. No margin for error. Turn a roll! McConnell's over on his side! Contact oh. between them! No substitute for success. Extra with an unbelievable cutback! There's the wave! This is Extreme E. Welcome to another episode of Electric Odyssey. In this show, we'll meet some more of the paddock's new additions, learn how the series is making a positive impact in the Red Sea, and bring you more nail-biting race action. But first, as the world's first electric off-road racing series prepared itself for a second skirmish in the Saudi Arabian desert, the paddock reflected on their time in Jeddah so far. Jeddah is a really like vibrant place. The colour of the ocean here is just spectacular and, and quite breathtaking. I'm like from Australia, so we're all about oceans and water and hot weather. But uh, yeah, it's a cool place. It's such an extreme location. You get beautiful mountains around you with you know dunes everywhere, and then you put a race course in the middle. Of, and uh, I think that's what puts you know an extra challenge and beauty around Extreme E because there is more than just the side by side racing. It's very spectacular, very exciting, very unpredictable. Of course, it's sustainable, which is important. Driving on the sand, I really enjoy like that pleasure of trying to drive a car as fast as you can. But then you throw in all the side-by-side -side racing and how everything evolves. You don't 100% always know what to expect. Typical uh, sandy track, sandy circuit, where I hope we can, as a team, be competitive. And more important, we can have good races and safe races. Every Odyssey 21 car in the paddock is powered by electricity created by ANOA hydrogen fuel cells on site. Extreme E and partners are dedicated to developing sustainable technologies in the fight against climate change. Our very own Laura Winter went out on track in the ANOA championship car with championship driver Patrick O'Donovan to put that power to the test. So I'm about to get into the ANOA championship car and I am very nervous to say the least. Patrick to event control. We're on the start line now, we're ready to go. Are we? <laughs> Come on, Ed. Okay, here we go. Patrick. <laughs> Breaking! Do not roll this car. <laughs> wow, the sand is so deep, it's so hard, isn't it? Is this the big jump? Yeah, this is the big jump, okay. yeah. Okay. It's all right, we're it's still okay. breaking and over. See? That's all right. Oh, it's quite rutty here, isn't it? I don't know how this car is flipping. This is on the limit, Patrick. Ah, we're fine. <laughs> so we're coming up to the Continental Traction Challenge now. And this is where you want to do the Anoa Hyperdrive, you think, or part of it? I would tell you when uh, yeah, it starts here at gate point 10. Okay. So it's going to be heavy braking zone oh. into 10. Yeah, that's heavy. Up over the crest, <laughs> keep it flat. We're in the traction challenge now. My eyes were just closed completely then. What's your favourite part of the course? I quite like the jumps. Yeah. You kind of lose control, it's good fun. <laughs> Don't say that. Straight through the fluffy sand, back into a heavy braking zone by 12 and 13. This is insane. This is such a physical course. Yeah, and now we're back onto that thick sand that we were talking about a second ago. Up over the crest again. So much air. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? Yeah, real good. I am holding on for dear life, though. This is amazing, but I've never done anything like this. And then we're back up over the jump. OK. Across the finish line. Oh. Oh. Wow. That was 
was amazing. <laughs> the most out of control, in control, I think. Please tell me you were in control. I think that's a compliment. I felt <laughs> out of control. Same. <laughs> don't say that! <laughs> no, I'm joking. That was good fun. Enjoy it. Thank you very that much. Thank you so much, mate. That was amazing. Round two, and teams were ready for another day of racing in the desert. Brilliant reaction time from Pastrana on the outside line. Can he get to turn one first? He's going to go deep. He squeezes across, shuts the door. Molly Taylor's trying the extra line. Not going to get to the apex soon enough, though, on the exit. Can she get inside the McLaren? She can't. And Arlen Kotlinski's gone around there for RXR as well. Kila's coming on the inside. Arlen Kotlinski looks to the inside of the American, but isn't quite there. Great job there. Travis Pastrana gets the whole shot. You know a hyperdrive off the line to get him into turn one first and shut the door. Travis Pastrana stretched the lead and handed over the car to his teammate with a big gap advantage. But as Ledbetter released the car before Pastrana got off the switch bay, they were given a penalty. Johan Christofferson was determined to catch the Legacy Motor Club car and take the first win of the day as soon as he jumped in the car. Gray Ledbetter is absolutely flying here. Christofferson though gets a good exit, has to check up on the way. Is he just inside her? No, not quite. She's still holding him off. I think he's going to get it done here. Goes long, but Ledbetter still holding on. And heading up towards turn one, Christofferson slots up the inside of Gray Ledbetter. Over the finish line, RXR win Q1. Fantastic drive by Arlen Kotlinski and Joen Christofferson. Well done, everyone. Good job. On to heat two, and Fraser McConnell took the whole shot with a battle for second behind him. Scheider and Hansen side by side. Timmy Hansen there with absolutely zero visibility as Fraser McConnell roosts Jim thoroughly from the Axiona Science Machine. Timo Scheider up the inside for Sun Mini Meal, making the pass. The DTM driver getting past the World Rallycross driver where they compete side by side. Let me close up and pass Scheider as soon as you can. And Timmy Hansen goes for it from a long way back. Oh, a little bit of contact up on two wheels for both cars. Hansen diving in from a long way back. That was going to be a great pass. Now he goes up wide. He's going to try and get the better exit here. Timo Scheider, though, parks it on the inside line and won't quite let Hansen through. Hansen jumps out to the outside line. Scheider's going to run him out wide, puts him out into the sand. Now he's on the inside, surely, as they come down past waypoint 12. Hansen locks up the wheels. Scheider will try and get him on the exit, but I think that will be moved on for the Andretti Al Tequila driver. Good job, Timmy. Munnings attacking Lyra Sands in front. 0.59 of a second, Katie Munnings carrying great pace. Despite Katie Munnings closing the gap and putting pressure on Lyra Sands, Axiona Science held on for the win. Buen trabajo, allá. Legacy Motor Club is the second new team joining the paddock this season. The All-American outfit is headed up by seven-car NASCAR champion Jimmy Johnson. But with Jimmy unable to contest the first double header, it was Nitrocross founder and action sports legend Travis Pastrana jumping in the driver's seat. To see such a big NASCAR team from the US come over to Extreme E was really cool. Uh, Jimmy unfortunately can't be here at round one because he's racing the Daytona 500, which is pretty much our biggest event in the United States. So um, he gave me a call. Uh, we had the opportunity to have Gray on the team. She's such a up and coming, just a bright light of uh, kind of female American uh, motorsports. And you know, she's got a lot of experience in the circle track as well as the off-road truck. So I think it's gonna be fit right in here. These are the best drivers in the world. And just to have a chance to race against everybody and get another shot to try to beat Matias Ekstrom, I'm in. This is the biggest moment of my entire life. It's more of a mentorship so far. Uh, he just pretty much kicks my butt at everything we do. Everything from ping pong, foosball. Um, I really haven't found anything. I'm trying maybe Mario Kart later. No, Matias has been really great since my first time really racing Race of Champions back in 2003 or 4. He's kind of helped me through the ranks, so looking forward to hopefully being some good competition for him. A little friendly banter, we'll be all right. Did you say the other day he has had more surgeries than anyone yeah. you know? Travis has had more major surgeries in years in his life. Uh, physically, I'm, I'm here. It's been seven weeks since a full knee replacement, but just got the okay from the doctor. I raced uh, last weekend for the first time. Except for the driver switch, I feel very good in the car. <laughs> so hopefully no rolls, no crashes, and I can get out of the car fast enough that Gray can take over and we don't lose time there. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to come over here to Extreme E is that the car doesn't always do exactly what the drivers seem to want it to do. So it's kind of a fun experience and we all as drivers get to learn, you know, even talking to Christofferson, I was like, hey, so do we get in the ruts? Do we get out of the ruts? He's like, I don't know. I just kind of look at what everyone else is doing. And that's, it's kind of neat to be here and for all the different environments that Extreme E goes to and showcases around the globe. 
I come from motocross and freestyle and everything's just kind of you know, figured out on the fly. And also I've done a lot of motorcycle riding in the desert, a lot of dune jumps. This is a little bit different uh, than anything I've really done, I guess, but I feel like I'll have a little bit of advantage when you know, we put these vehicles on the absolute limit. I'm used to driving things on two wheels, uh, used to being sideways and spinning and, and everything else. So hopefully we avoid most of that, but we can drive on that edge and find it pretty quickly. Whoa, two wheels again. With the limited amount of time that Legacy had to put everything together, hopefully we can get them some good points. Hopefully we can put everything on the grid. And if we do well, I might be back for the next one. It was all to play for with the remaining qualifying points up for grabs, which would see four teams progress to the grand final. And away we go. Good start on the outside. Munnings uses the hyperdrive pretty early. Everybody else does. Ekstrom's waiting again, so I suspect this is a repeat of yesterday's line. He wants it on the exit. He's gone out wide. Watch for Matthias Ekstrom now. They're side by side on the inside line. Kevin Hansen bursts through the middle. Now watch for Ekstrom on the hyperdrive. 400 kilowatts. It is a carbon copy of yesterday. Straight into the whole shot in turn two. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant start. Despite the brilliant performance of Matthias Ekstrom, who held on for the first two laps, Veloce executed a perfect switchover, jumping in front of the Neon McLaren car. Also behind, Timmy Hansen in the Andretti Altakiwa Odyssey was eager for a place in the grand final. It was a spectacular battle and masterclass of overtakes within the top three teams. Timmy Hansen, watch him. Andretti out to Keelit, going for the outside line. He's on your outside. He's on your outside. Lean again on the radio, St. Gutierrez. He's outside. She blocks him, runs the car wide. Hansen goes up to the inside line now to cut back. Can he get on the exit power just a little bit earlier here? But Gutierrez gets sideways again. He is all over. He's nailed onto the back of that car. Keep it clean, Timmy. Set them up, set them up. They'll make a mistake. Hansen up the inside, gets it done this time. Gutierrez leaves just a car's width. And keeping the pressure in front on a defensive Molly Taylor, Timmy Hansen was waiting for the perfect moment to pass for a win. This time it's done. Timmy Hansen with a move through two different corners. Brilliant drive for the Andretti out to Keelit team. Although the tension was not over for second place. Gutierrez and Taylor side by side. It's a brilliant last gasp move. Two wheels on Gutierrez. But will that be enough for the McLaren team to make it through? Yeah, boys. <laughs> Yes! It's a win for Andretti Abakilin. Relief for Katie Munnings. That was a hell of a race. In the last heat of qualifying, RXR and Axiona Signs copied the extra line at the start, and it was Johan Christofferson taking the whole shot with Laia Sands in second, and Gray Ledbetter in third up to the switch zone. That's the go, 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 and that's for Travis Pastrana. So it's five seconds, get them. Travis Pastrana uses the Inoa Hyperdrive. Going to get alongside Fraser McConnell, backing in from a long way back. Opposite lock, on the lock stop. Pastrana just holds onto the car, and McConnell just holds onto the position. Wow. Play smart P3 is OK for the final. Travis Pastrana was putting on a show and made the pass over Axiona signs Fraser McConnell. Whoa! Two wheels again! Even Travis Pastrana is left open mouthed at that one. Incredible! But keeping the pace in front, it was Michaela Arlen Kotelinski bringing the Rosberg X Racing's machine across the finish line in first. Well done, everyone. Good job again. Okay, good job. Another qualifying top spot for RXR, who made it to the grand final alongside Andretti Altakilat, Axiona Sainz, and Veloce Racing. The bottom four teams would fight for best points in the redemption race. It's now time to celebrate our paddock heroes, the hardworking, dedicated people at Extreme E who work tirelessly behind the scenes. My name is Julia and I work with Extreme E and I'm the safety manager here. Prior to coming on to the event site, I get involved in lots of documentation. I write things like event safety management plans, risk assessments. And then when I'm actually on site, it's very varied. Initially, I'm signing off all of the telehandlers, the equipment that you see on site. And then we get into the actual event week. We have the build, so make sure that working at height or the manual handling, all of those things you think about safety are carried out as they should be. 
during the event week, there's many teams that I overlap with, in fact, probably most, working with them to make sure that we've got everything ready for when the teams are here. Then we have race times that match with the live broadcast times and therefore we have to make sure that the drivers get out to the start line on time. So my little notebook is my timings, but of course when something goes wrong on the course or the race director needs to have some more time before we can send the cars out, I like to have my little notebook and pencil just to make those amendments. With Extreme, as the title suggests, we go to these extreme remote places and we have to ensure that we still have the correct medical cover, that we still are able to make sure that people can get all of the facilities that you would if you were in a major city or anywhere else. Because of the locations and because of the challenges that in itself poses, that's what I love and working as a team. Every day you find something new, it is unique. You come together as this big family, but in each location, we look at what we could encounter, and then we have to then just deal with what does happen when we're on site. You never know, weather might change, um, somebody has an accident that you haven't foreseen, so it's the variety that I absolutely love. Despite two second place finishes in qualifying, it was a first redemption race of the year for McLaren, who were joined by JBXE and Extreme debutantes Legacy Motor Club and Sun Min Emil. Timo Scheider on the outside gets a good start straight away. Everybody except Scheider has used their Inoa Hyperdrive, so Scheider we can only assume is going for the extra move. He'll try and cut back. Heads right out wide. Gutierrez is on the extra line too, but coming around the outside line. Contact! Dani Rakil goes straight over in the JBXC machine. Ah, oh, that's a bit of a bummer. So, red flag. With Dania Akil emerging unharmed from the JBXC car, the remaining three teams lined up for the race start. Green light, big reaction time on both sides of the grid. Timo Scheider and Travis Pastrana. Pastrana, look at the nose of the car rise when he used the Anoa Hyperdrive. Timo Scheider squeezing from the outside. Scheider going to pass her on the exit, though. Pastrana for Legacy Motor Club up and over the crest gets the whole shot in this one. Travis Pastrana brought the Legacy machine into the switch zone with a four-second lead from Sun Mini Mills Timo Scheider and McLaren's Cristina Gutierrez in third. Incoming Matthias Ekstrom had it all to do. Look at this. Already, Ekstrom trying to find a way past Clara Anderson. So Clara Anderson trying to defend. Ekstrom goes ultra long wow. with the McLaren. They're saying push, push, push. Is he inside Clara Anderson coming into the left-hander at turn five? He is. So Ekstrom is making short work here or trying to, but Clara Anderson's not going to let him have that. No way. She fights back for Sun Mini Mills Ekstrom. Look at him. Is there a way through for Ekstrom here? Yes, it seems like he has done it. Gap, three seconds. Go chase her down. Coming through, trying to make his way. Going to go wide and tight. Gray Ledbetter just holding on. Now Extra moves to the inside and he's got her passed in the final corner. Extra just holds on, but Gray Ledbetter at 19 years old. Absolutely brilliant. Good job, Matthias. All right, I think for the weekend, boys and girls. As part of their ongoing commitment towards sustainability, Extreme e highlights an ecological challenge faced at every location they race in. We spoke to Professor Carlos Duarte about the vulnerability of coral reefs in the Red Sea and what it might mean for future generations. Tropical corals are the tropical forest of the sea in terms of the importance in building a structure but also supporting biodiversity. So coral reefs support one in every four marine species. They also provide livelihoods for nearly one billion people around the world and they protect the shorelines of vulnerable countries. And if coral reefs are lost, some low-lying nations will actually lose their national territory. By current assessments, we have lost about nearly two-thirds of the extent of corals in the ocean and the drivers of those losses have been multiple. But over the last 20 years and more strongly over the last eight years, then climate change is the major driver of loss. So about 15% of the losses of corals can be directly attributed to climate change. And the projections of the future of corals and the climate change, we might lose 75 to 90%. So being the first ecosystem that is at risk of becoming functional extinct due to climate change. Personally, I'm involved in four major efforts to uh, conserve corals. 
I'm the executive director of CORDAPS, and it's the only global program where scientists from different nations are working together to deliver new science and technology to conserve and restore coral reefs. Then on my own work as a scientist, through the work that I do, the research that my team and students do, we focus a lot on the future of coral reefs, and we have created a new startup called Ocean Revive, providing cost-effective technologies to uh, restore coral reefs uh, elsewhere. When we say that one billion livelihoods depend on coral reefs, we're thinking only on one human generation. But if coral reefs are lost, they will be lost for a long time. It takes about 5,000 years to build a coral reef. So we're talking about 200 generations of humans that will have to go around their livelihoods in the absence of coral reefs and some nations that will disappear altogether. Coral reefs are not just a matter of coastal people. There'll be a sense of grief by everybody, and including those that will never see a healthy coral reef, but they will read about them in books and then blame me and my generation for the damage done. To help spread this important message, we invited the drivers to Kaust University, where researchers are working to find ways to promote coral life. Today we're enjoying an evening with Extreme E, drivers from different teams, will come to Kaust and we will share with the community what Extreme is about, our commitment with climate action and also advancing new technologies. The drivers will get to see what re research is happening here in Kaust. So they're going to go through the wet lab where we can see uh, different experiments that are going on on developing technologies for coral restoration. So does this have a predator like will fish come and eat this? Or? Yeah, which is why they mainly only come out at night so that they yeah. can avoid that. We had a great seminar with Professor Carlos and Ali Russell telling us about Extreme. He explained to everyone and um, now we're here at the coral farm and they're showing us how they help accelerate the growth and how important it is to add to the ecosystem. It's really interesting to see how sports is raising awareness about these kind of uh, environmental issues that we're facing. This is a really difficult world to bring together around are common challenges and we need to uh, collaborate together and only one unifier in the world is sports. Going into the grand final, Rosberg X Racing were aiming for the second win of the weekend. But Andretti Altaquilat, Axiona Science and Veloce Racing had other ideas. Fraser McConnell on the inside line with Timmy Hansen next to him. There you can see, you know, a hyperdrive from everyone except Arlen Kotlinski, who's going to hang back at the back of the pack. Two cars wide, three cars wide. Molly Taylor goes up the inside of Timmy Hansen. There is zero visibility at the back of the pack there. Arlen Kotlinski uses the Inoa Hyperdrive now on the run down to the next corner, gets inside. Oh, manages one pass. That was late on the Hyperdrive, but she did manage to get past Molly Taylor. But it's Fraser McConnell who leads at the moment for Axiona Science. OK, you're safe now. Three car lengths. And an enormous jump, almost on the nose for Arlen Kotlinski. That came down hard. I thought she might go end over end, but she's got away with it. She's absolutely sending it out there. Come on, come on, buddy, come on. I'll watch it to your right. Good job, stay there, stay there. Good job, keep pushing like that. Eyes up, eyes up. After losing out to Veloce's Molly Taylor for P3, Michaela Arlen Kotlinski pushed hard to claw it back. But track conditions made it difficult for the RXR machine to keep up. We still need 1.5. Close it up, Timmy. Close it up. It was a similar story at the front, with Timmy Hansen chasing down Fraser McConnell for the lead. Come on, Timmy. Every meter helps Katie. Every meter. Close it. Close it. With all the drivers evenly matched, it was a close run to the finish line. Brilliant stuff. Keep this up. Keep that pressure. Buena, buena linea. 1.4. New signing Fraser McConnell takes the win with last year's champion elect Laia Sands. Axiona Sainz get the win. Sí, señor. Carrerón. What a start to the year. We are in for a hell of a season. What happened, Laia? We won. <laughs> <laughs> we won. We got uh, an amazing win, I think. Fraser did an amazing job in the start of the final. I knew that if he brings the car in first position, I had to fight to keep it. And uh, I also did a good job in my turn and super happy and uh, thankful with Fraser also. Oh, it's amazing, you know, first weekend with the team. I'm the new boy in the camp, so 
you know, first impressions are the most important for me. And, you know, yesterday everything was so great up until the final. And it's only the second time I've rolled a car, so I was really feeling down and out about it and so upset with how I, you know, basically repaid the team. So came in today with a lot of fire in my eyes and in my belly. And it's so great to repay the team for all their hard work and trust within me. And what did their team boss, Carlos Sainz, think of their performance? For sure, he was really happy. He was in the command centre, as he always is, putting so much effort into the team to helping us get as fast as we can and give us the best chance we can to go out there and win. Still such a fierce competitor, still such an inspiration for me as well. Really, really cool person to be having under the 10 video and um, living the dream. We are not here to, to play. We came here to try to do good results. Still is so long to know if we will be in the battle, but of course it's our goal to try to be there until the end, fighting for the championship. It will be super tough, but of course it is in our minds. I think we have the pace, um, we have the right team, so we will do our best, we will work hard, and we will try, for sure. This is so cool, I like it, and um, for sure it tastes special for me. After the end of the last season, it was a hard moment. So today when I see the team that happy, everything pays off. So it was so nice and let's keep working to get more of this.